you're triggered by the thumbnail, well, don't worry, we'll explain. Because these are the seven worst new trucks to buy in 2024. My name's Brad, this is Idealist, and let's go. All right, look, truth is pretty much every new truck built within the last couple of years is honestly a pretty solid choice. But as the 2024 models start making their way onto dealer lots, there are a few that stand out above the rest. Maybe a new truck scores low in initial quality, or maybe a particular pickup simply doesn't offer enough when compared to competitors in its price bracket. Or maybe the 2024 model is such an improvement over the unsold 23 inventory that even with a steep discount, you'd be making a huge mistake not getting the updated model. Just like the first truck on today's list. Folks, it is finally here. We were invited to the world premiere of this truck months ago. And as of today, the final production versions are trickling out to the public. The new Tacoma is just incredible, which is exactly why, honestly, you should avoid the 23s. And to be clear, the 23 Tacoma is also a killer truck. And it's built up a huge following of diehard enthusiasts for very good reasons. But when you consider the value proposition of a new one, the old one starts to look, well, well, really old. And while Toyota will very likely offer the remaining 23s at decent discounts, your money doesn't go nearly as far as it does with the brand new 24. That generation of Tacoma might be sold as a brand new vehicle, but in actuality, it's a design that's over eight years old, which car years is like dog years. So it's like 80 years old. Now, I can already hear some of you typing away in the comments and arguing that you'd never consider a pickup powered by a hybrid turbo four, but I challenge you to take one for a drive because I think you might be convinced. The third generation Taco is a great truck, but for basically the same money, the new one is Supreme. Ugh, we had such high hopes for the Lightning. I mean, I still haven't really forgiven Ford for stealing the legendary Lightning name for an EV, but it is a clever fit. And the F-150 Lightning has had a rough go, plagued with recalls, a nationwide stop sale for trucks spontaneously combusting, and real-world towing performance that doesn't even come close to what's advertised. And if you haven't seen it, our friend Tyler Hoover of Hoobie's Garage tried towing his 1930 Model A with a lightweight aluminum trailer just 30 miles, and the truck used up over half of its range. He estimated that the F-150 Lightning with the smaller of the two optional batteries, a truck capable, by the way, of towing 7,600 pounds, would make it less than 100 miles towing a light load. For a truck that's marketed for its utility and towing capacity, that's a serious limitation. Taken together, all those reasons have made the Lightning less than appealing to those who need a reliable workhorse. Add in the fact that they're not exactly cheap, and it's easy to see why this version of Ford's best-selling F-150 isn't exactly flying off dealer lots. Truthfully, the 2024 Jeep Gladiator isn't a bad pick. If you primarily plan on using the thing off-road, it's actually one of the best options out there. And for 2024, it's undergone a mid-life crisis, I mean, refresh, which includes a revised seven-slot grille, new wheel designs, an updated instrument cluster complete with a new 12.3-inch touchscreen on all models, a whole host of new safety features like side curtain airbags, forward collision warning, plus advanced cruise control standard across all trims aside from the base sport version, Plus, there are a few improved off-road goodies as well. And new for this year, Jeep claims up to a 7,700 pound towing capacity. So overall, a huge upgrade all the way around. But if you're in the market for a practical daily driver truck that has good on-road manners, blended with off-road capability, this is not it. On-road, the suspension is harsh and steering feels like it's got a mind of its own. It crashes over bumps and at higher speeds, road feel is less than confidence inspiring. Add in somewhat questionable build quality and relatively poor rankings in recent JD Power initial quality studies, and it's not hard to see why you could probably do a lot better than the Gladiator. The recently updated Nissan Frontier is actually a pretty decent mid-sized pickup when viewed on its own. It's equipped with the lively 3.8 liter V6 engine, delivering a pretty robust 310 horsepower and 281 foot-pounds of torque. The Frontier boasts a tough, well-executed interior featuring a digital gauge cluster and comfortable seats. But when compared to all of the competition, it lags behind in several aspects, including utility. Its maximum towing capacity is limited to 6,720 pounds, which falls short 
of other pickups in its class. 2024 does give us that totally rad hard body edition, but in typical Nissan fashion, virtually everything on the Frontier is exactly the same as it was last year, and heck, last decade. Fact is, there are newer, more compelling trucks out there that offer better interiors, higher carrying capacity and towing ratings, and far better driving dynamics for the same or even less money. Unfortunately, this is one we'd recommend that you skip. The Ford Ranger has been totally redesigned for 2024. It steps up its game with several enhancements over the 2023 model. A new, more powerful turbocharged V6 engine is available in the XLT and Lariat trims, boasting 315 horsepower and allowing for a beefed up towing capacity of 7,500 pounds. This engine upgrade is a game changer for performance enthusiasts. Additionally, the 2024 Ranger is bigger in every dimension, adding to its wheelbase and track for improved comfort and towing prowess. Plus, it's loaded with more tech, making it the most connected and capable Ranger yet. And while its new base price is over 34,000 and it is an increase over 2023's, the price hike is absolutely worth it. Nothing against the outgoing Ranger, it's perfectly fine, but drive them back to back, especially one with that new V6, we think you'll agree the worst new Ranger you could buy is one of the remaining 2023s. The 2024 Hyundai Santa Cruz introduces a few updates over the 2023 model, but in our opinion, they're not compelling enough to justify shelling out the extra money over the 2023. Because while there is the new XRT trim level, which adds sportier aesthetics, an upgraded 10.25 infotainment system, and LED projector headlights, aside from the new range topping trim, what's new? Well, not much. The 24 Santa Cruz retains the same engine options, a standard 191 horsepower 2.5 liter four cylinder engine for the SE and SEL trims, and a more powerful 281 horsepower turbocharged version for the Knight, XRT, and Limited trims. Given the relative minor changes and the fact that the 23 model will likely be available at a lower price, you might be better off opting for last year's Santa Cruz, unless the specific upgrades of the 24 model particularly appeal to your needs. Okay, last and probably least, the Lordstown Endurance. Scheduled to release in 24, Lordstown Motors has been grappling with financial instability, casting doubts about the company's long-term viability, making the prospect of after-sales support and servicing look less than reliable. I mean, it's hard to get a truck warrantied if the company is out of business. Now, the Endurance has experienced repeated production delays, which has raised concerns about the company's manufacturing capabilities and, well, the Endurance's quality. As the new kid in the competitive EV market, establishing consumer trust is crucial, and these delays could prove detrimental. What's more is the untested nature of the Endurance. As Lordstown Motors' first vehicle, there's no track record of consumer feedback to gauge its reliability and performance. Early adopters often face unfair seen issues, and with a new company, these risks are amplified. In summary, financial uncertainty, production delays, unproven technology, and a lack of robust support networks make it a riskier choice compared to other options available for 24. And honestly, it's probably not a truck we'd be willing to gamble on. Let's hope it proves us wrong. So there are our picks for the worst trucks to buy in 24, but we want to know what your thoughts. Which trucks do we miss? Which trucks do you disagree with? Let me know in the comments below. Also, remember to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and check out this ideal vid up here or whatever YouTube recommends you watch next down here. I'm Brad, this is Ideal, and promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle. Mm -hmm.